Quote, we colored people have taken a vote and decided that we don't cotton to that whole emancipation thing. Freedom means having to work for real, think for ourselves, and take consequences along with the rewards. That is just too much to ask of us colored people, and we demand that it stop. Mr. Lincoln, you were the greatest racist ever. We had a great gig, three squares, room and board, all our decisions made by the massa in the House. Please repeal the 13th and 14th Amendments and let us get back to where we belong. That particularly uh, nauseating screed written by Tea Party activist Mark Williams on his blog last week. Um, that was apparently a bridge too far for Mr. Williams and for the organization he represents, the Tea Party Express. Both man and Tea Party machine have since been slammed by two other groups, the Tea Party Nation and the National Tea Party Federation, which kicked Mark and his group out entirely, seemingly. This is perhaps an unsurprising development, uh, given that Mark Williams is the man most famous in TV land for saying stuff like this. Mark, uh, what you're saying may, makes sense to me here when I'm hearing what you say, but then I read on your blog, you say, you, you call the president an Indonesian Muslim turned welfare thug and a racist in chief. I mean, yeah, do you believe country. he's Muslim? Do you really believe he's a welfare thug? I, I, he's certainly acting like it. <laughs> So Mark, the president is an Indonesian Muslim welfare thug, Williams, and his Tea Party Express have been kicked out of the Tea Party movement, booted. What does that even mean? How do you get kicked out of a movement? How do you get kicked out of the Tea Party movement? Do you have to turn in your frequent protest sign making card? Do you no longer qualify for a discount on tea bags to staple to the brim of your hat? How do you lose Tea Party or affiliation? Well, let's see here. The Tea Party Express was created by Sal Russo, who is a longtime California Republican operative. The Tea Party Express, Mark Williams Group, should not be confused with a for-profit group that's called the Tea Party Nation. Tea Party Nation is the famous thrower of conventions gone terribly wrong. At its first convention this winter, you'll recall that a former Republican congressman and presidential hopeful called for reinstating literacy tests as a precondition for voting. Yes, Jim Crow, I said literacy tests, as in what century is this again and what country is this? Tea Party Nation convention part two was to be held this month in Las Vegas, but ticket sales were slow because of the weather, or so the organization claimed. Apparently nobody warned them. It was hot in Vegas in the summer, uh, and Tea Party for-profit convention part two was postponed. Um, the Tea Party Express, Mr. Williams' group, should also not be confused with the Tea Party Patriot, Patriots, uh, which is a whole other thing. It should also not be confused with the Tea Party Party in Florida. That is an actual registered political party, meaning you can vote for its candidates. Other Tea Party groups think the Tea Party Party are frauds and not really that Tea Party-ish at all, so they want them to be called not the Tea Party, but the TEA Party, so as to prevent confusion. And speaking of confusion, there's also the newly minted National Tea Party Federation, an umbrella group that includes and has alliances with Dick Armey's Freedom Works, the socially conservative right-wing anti-gay family research council, the corporate-funded Americans for Prosperity, and until very recently, the aforementioned Tea Party Express. So you got all that? Tea Party Express, admonished by the Tea Party Nation and booted from the National Tea Party Federation. The spokesman for the National Tea Party Federation is a guy who also runs another group, which is called Tea Party 365. And this gentleman, David Webb, apparently has the power to expel Tea Party groups, expel Tea Party people, and to call for other Tea Party conventions. Think what it would mean to this nation if we would have an open forum and a real summit, a real tea summit instead of a beer summit All right. on race relations. All right. He said it, and so it was. The Unity Convention, I didn't make that up and slap them with it, they picked it themselves. The Unity Convention for Tea Partiers who want to talk about race will be held at the end of this month. As best as we can tell, the Tea Party Express will not be participating. The Tea Party movement gets talked about and reported on as a movement, as a cohesive, unified, organized movement that explains a lot in American politics right now. But if this is organized, what counts as disorganized? Joining us now is Ezra Klein, staff writer for The Washington Post and an MSNBC contributor. Ezra, thanks very much for being here. 
Good evening, Rachel. You're going to need to borrow Glenn Beck's blackboard to do that, I think. <laughs> the good news, though, is that I can do part of it with a stencil, because all of the groups all say Tea Party in them somewhere, so you could just stencil that all over the board and then fill no. in all the modifiers. But we need visuals. Yeah, I know. It's, the, the confusion here is, I mean, the way that I'm talking about it makes it sound confusing, but it's no less confusing in real life. And the, I feel like the common wisdom, especially in Beltway reporting, is that the Tea Party is this cohesive movement with leaders and an agenda and clear demands and in real life when you really report on them it just doesn't seem like they're like that no and and i, I should say i'm not a, a main reporter on tea parties but i'm a reporter on, on washington politics and what's interesting here is that you're having a movement that is not internally cohesive essentially taking over a movement that is not only internally cohesive generally but also quite powerful which is the republican party uh, michelle bachman this week i believe it was filed to begin a tea party house caucus so in the house of representatives there will now be a tea party caucus and different members of of the gop were joining in today and this gets very very dangerous for the republican party because it's one thing to have an activated energetic disorganized chaotic grassroots movement that is helping you but you can keep it arm length. It's another thing to let it into the party, because as you, as you saw with, um, with the, the now ejected Tea Party Express, if I'm remembering our intro correctly, <laughs> they say they're not media trained. They're not politicians. They're just people. And if you bring that linkage too close, suddenly the Republican Party has to answer for all that they do. In terms of the way that this movement, this sort of disorganized movement, is affecting the very, very organized Republican Party... Where do you see manifestations of that influence? What has happened in Republican politics that you think reflects the power of this movement? Well, you can name, and I think John Shea pointed this out at the New Republic, you can name at least four Senate races that look to be endangered because of the Tea Party. Um, in Nevada, of course, they were going to knock off Harry Reid. And then Sharon Angle won because of Tea Party support. And now Reid has been up in, in three straight polls. In Florida, you had uh, Charlie Crist was a lock to win that Senate seat. Then Marco Rubio looked, to beat, looked like he would beat him in the primary. Crist moved into the middle and now seems to be ahead, running a sort of a centrist Democratic coalition. You have... Uh, um, in in Pennsylvania, you also had, it wasn't exactly Tea Party, but it was allied, where Specter was driven out of the party. He then became the Democrat's 60th vote on health care reform, then was knocked out by Specter, uh, by Specter, by Sestak. I'm not as good at this as you are. <laughs> and so now it looks like they may lose that election, too. So oh, you can go sort of on and on and on down the line. And at the end of the day, the Tea Party, which has given a lot of energy to the Republican Party, may actually end up taking seats away from it. One last point, Ezra, on the issue of deficits. Do, does the base, either as articulated through the Tea Party movement or not, care enough about deficits that proposals like Marco Rubio's, like all of these other uh, candidates who are proposing big tax cuts without paying for them, does that pose a potential political problem for them if these base voters really do care about deficits? But the base voters really don't. There was a Tea Party poll, I believe it was in the New York Times about a week ago, that asked directly, which would you prefer to, uh, that the Republicans and the government in general focus on tax cuts or deficit reduction? Tax cuts won out about 49 to 42 or 43. So there doesn't really appear to be a conflict there. Like the Republican Party itself, deficits are convenient for now, but tax cuts tend to be the actual priority. As Klein, staff writer for The Washington Post and MSNBC contributor. Next time we'll do the whole thing with puppets, okay? Thank you. All right, <laughs> thanks.